Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his glory book says, Ya Ayyuhana bin Amanu Antum wa Tukara'u Allah is what I'm going to read. Oh, you who believe, it is you who are needy. And Allah, He is my free peace and praise Him. <clears throat> I mean, uh, about a month from now, a little more than that, shall I be um, enjoying the month of Ramadan. Um, prior to that, we'll be into the month of Shaban. And this particular month, which is including now is the month of Rajab, the only month of Rajab. The month of Rajab is among the four holy months or inviolable, inviolable months which will be taken the sacred from the time that Allah created the universe, the heavens and the earth. And we're told to in, 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 increase our worship, increase our service during this month, as in other months. Uh, because during this month, the good that we do is multiplied multiple times, and the evil we do also is considered to be much more serious during these months. It is also an opportunity for us to prepare and um, set the ground or the, uh, for the uh, upcoming uh, pass to Ramadan, um, get ourselves equipped increase our fasting, uh, at least for the remaining days for those who have to take advantage of the month, increase our charity, increase our prayer, etc., etc. But this month is also special, as many of us know, not all of us, inshallah, that many Muslims believe that this is the month of the 27th night of Rajab, where the Prophet ﷺ had his miraculous night journey and ascension at the Salah of the Arash. The night journey, if you know, is the journey he took with the angel from the Masjid al Haram to the Masjid al Aqsa. From the sacred mosque to the remote or the furthest mosque found in Jerusalem. And he returned in the same night, and it became a source of fitna for people who followed the Prophet of the desert king. And the Muslim king, they saw it as the perfect opportunity to, to get rid of the threats of Muhammad community. Now, the Prophet, I just want to what you appreciate the Surah Mi'raj, the spiritual journey. You need to reflect upon many things. One is that one of the things that made most special, especially during that time, was that unlike the Muslim king, Afterlife. The Muslim king did not believe in an afterlife. Most of them did. The Muslim king didn't believe in the unseen. They believed in Jinn, that they were real. Uh, but we, as a in Ummah, that one of the things that distinguishes us, especially in a time of hyper materialism, where we've been told that we can only believe that which we can touch with our hands, only tangible things that we continue to adhere and cling to our faith. Allah is untangible, is intangible. Right? No person can ever say to you, oh, there he is. We know God is real. Even if empirically we cannot prove his existence. We know it's real. They believe in angels, they believe in the power of prayer and dua, and the power of thikr, the recitation and reading of the Quran, all of these are sources of reward. So the Prophet Muhammad SAW coming into this world, alayhi salatu wasalam, we know he had many different struggles. And he told us about the Anbiya, Ashad bin Nasi, Balaad al Anbiya. Those with the hardest tests are the prophets. And then those next to them are like this, and those next to them are like this. We look at his life and see how he came into this world. He was not knowing his father. His father died before he was born. His, his mother gives him up 
to a caretaker for his first five years. And that five, he returns to his mother. And after one year, she dies. Then his grandfather takes on his care. And after uh, a few more years, and he dies as well. And then his uncle. And by the time he reaches 40, as we learn, the angel finally comes to him and tells him that, Anta Rasulullah, he let not. You are the messenger of God to the people. Of course, he had his doubts about this at first, but then he was pushed to proclaim the message. The message of God, Ilaha Allah. The message of justice for the oppressed. Service to humanity, service to God. That that was his mission. He was to cleanse the Kaaba of the idols. And on the way, he experienced, he and his followers, many uh, great tribulations, especially in Mecca, as we know. And even right prior to the Isra, the Prophet and the believers, along with Bani Hashem, who are not Muslims, they all suffered in Kisar, in embargo for three years, as if they were trying to starve him to death. And then they finished this embargo, and then perhaps because of um, sickness due to the embargo, both his uncle and his wife, Khadija, alayhi salam, that she dies, and his uncle, Abu Farid, the Prophet, of course, seeing how far the Shukim were prepared to go, he he realized that you have to find a new home. And he turned his attention to Ba'ev. He goes to Ba'ev to meet the leaders of Ba'ev, the three men who were the sons of the tribal chieftain, Amr ibn Humayr al Taqabu. And he spoke to them and he asked them for their support. He wanted them to accept this vow. They rejected him. One of them, he has. God can't find anyone other than you. So the Prophet you can imagine after 10 years of all of this, and Allah is promising him that victory will come eventually, and the followers, the Prophet, he remains for about 10 days, and he's calling people over and over to Islam to eventually what they did, they bring out the, the lowly people in society. And some of even the children, and they help the Prophet, and Zayd ibn Qadiza, and he drive them out. And Zayd is trying to shield the Prophet from the stones. And eventually, they make it to an orchard of one of the enemies, uh, the sons of Rabi'a. And the Prophet, sallallahu he sits in the, in the shade of one of the, the trees, and he makes a dua that he never made before, and he never made after that. Extremely powerful prayer, expressing his helplessness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it shows his great concern. What his major concern was, the concern was mainly that Allah might be angry. If this is what, why is this happening to me? I hope it's not because you're angry with me, Ya Allah. I just lost my wife, lost my uncle, many of my people, I died, etc., etc. We can't find a home. I've been driven out. I've been pelted. And he said, Allahumma inni asku ilayka Oh Allah, I complain to you the weakness of my power. Wa qilla And the ineffectiveness of my strategy. Wa hawani alinnas. And my belittlement in the eyes of the people. I mean, they don't see me as anything great. They don't see me the way you see me. Or perhaps even some of my people see me. And they say, Ya Arhamar Rahimi. Oh, most merciful of those who show mercy. Anta Rabbul Mustafafin. You are the Lord of the oppressed. You are the Lord of the oppressed. And you are my Lord. As if to say, I'm among the oppressed. 
You are my Lord. In whose custody will you place me? Under whose care shall you place me? Will you place me under the custody and the power and the authority of a distant relative who will make my life a hell? Or will you give it to a, an enemy of mine whom you give you grant him authority over me? And then he finally says, He said, as long as you are not angry with me, then I care not. As long as you are not angry with me, I care not. However, your pardon, your expansiveness, your forgiveness, your well-being, that grants me more space, grants me more comfort. I take refuge with the light of your face, by which all darkness is, darkness is removed, and the affair of this world and the hereafter are put in order. And tunzila bi ghadaba. I take refuge with you that you descend or send down upon me your wrath. O yahilla alayya sakhatuk. Or that your anger, it will, it, it will affect me. But then he also says, look at uzba hatta tabba. It is yours to admonish until you are content. It is yours to test and punish until you are content. Look at uzba hatta tabba. And there's no light nor power except by you. Special prayer. Most special prayer in the Sira. It might be one of the prayer I love the most when I read it. And alhamdulillah, I was able to make it through it. I usually when I say that prayer, I cry just to even repeat that prayer publicly. But what happens after this? Of course, we know that he is sold some comfort by the owners of that, that orchard. Then eventually he makes his way back to Mecca. And he stops and he prays Salat al-Fajr. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends him a message letting him know that a, a, a group of the jinn, they heard his Salat and his message of the Qur'an. Inna sami'na Qur'an al-Ajaba. He said that they, they, they heard the message of the Qur'an and they believed. They accepted it. Allah informed the Prophet of this. And not long after this is when the Isra and Mi'raj happened. Not long after this. In other words, it's saying that I see everything that happened to you. I know and I'm not unaware of what has occurred. And I allowed it to happen to form you into the person that you are. But I'm going to send you a message. Remain firm, remain sincere and committed to this mission. And even when it looks like everyone in the world, they have turned their backs on you. And you have no support. Remember that there's an unseen realm. And that realm is more important than any other realm. The material realm has rejected you, but the spiritual realm has accepted you. The jinn, they have accepted you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to renew his faith, he takes him on the Isra and Mi'raj, shows him ayat al kubra his great, most wondrous signs, to reaffirm his faith, to strengthen him, and he comes back with greater conviction after that. So brothers and sisters, it is always a, 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 a good thing to, to relate things from the seerah. Remember, things that happen in the life of the Messenger and take into consideration that sometimes Allah's, Allah's answer, it comes late, but it will come. You should not allow the stress 
and the pressure to, to, to make you buckle and to give up. If this promise is turn its back on you, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, the other realm will accept you. And as a matter of fact, and I'll close with this, it is said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves someone, that He sends a message to Jibreel alayhi salam. He tells Jibreel, I love so and so, I love Fulan. I love Fulan, so you love him too. And then the angel, he goes to the angels of the seventh heaven and he tells them, Allah loves so and so, so love him. And then they go to the sixth heavens and they tell those, Allah loves so and so, and so love him, until all the way down to the, the lowest heaven. And then eventually it reaches the earth. And then then the people will also love that person. But we won't get there without patience. And a reminder that there's more than this, this material realm. There's a, there's a there's spiritual realm right now even. The Mala'ika, they're with us. Remind yourself of that over and over and over. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our hearts. Grant us strong conviction and sincerity. أقول قولي هذا وصف الله لي بركة وسائر المسلمين والمسلمات. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا يحمد الله وزمان إلا على الظالمين. تعالى ونشكره ونستهديه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين المسلمين اللهم ردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم ردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم ردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء والأموات واغفر لنا الله ومعهم بفضل وإحسانه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم بارك لنا في رجل وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم بارك لنا في رجل وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم بارك لنا في رجب وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئنا من لدنك رشدا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وصل الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الأحجار وسلم تسليما كثيرا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Okay.